Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. First day on the job site, and we're going to be removing this driveway and we're uh, and this walkway. And that dirt area there is going to be all concrete, so the whole driveway is going to get widened. That planter's coming out as well, that little brick raised planter against the house, so that'll just be solid concrete. This palm tree is going to be coming out at some point, but that's a second, that's another phase. Now you can see the palm tree pushed out the sidewalk, the city sidewalk, about an inch. So we're going to saw cut that where it's supposed to be. That way when we put the driveway in, it's in a straight line in case that city sidewalk comes out. Um, it can match up against uh, the new driveway. That'll stay straight. That's my brother Douglas. He's we snapped the line on there. He sprayed. He's gonna spray some clear lacquer on there, and that'll preserve the line, even with the water running on the saw. So he'll be making that cut while I start breaking the concrete. There's your upside down clear marking spray, that will preserve that chalk line. Also, I used that spray on a trowel that I had autographed from a student body. Um, you may have seen the video from Hope Builders student, student body. I have a, a little um, live action within the video that we'll get to um, in about eight minutes or so. Also, we're going to be giving away an M18 Milwaukee Switch Tank Concrete Sprayer. It's a backpack sprayer, about four gallons. Really nice, and I've been using it a lot lately. No more pumping, you just have to charge the battery. But I'm going to have a key phrase within this video I'm going to give out, and uh, we're going to give away two of them. They're about 260 a piece, 260, 300, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. But here we are with my new Vermeer with the, con with the breaker attachment on it, and we're going through this concrete really easily. What I did with the breaker initially is I broke all the way around the perimeter of everything. The brick, the garage floor, the city sidewalk. I really pulverized that area. That way when I started lifting the concrete up, it doesn't disturb the surrounding area. Like I wouldn't break the brick planter that way. I wouldn't damage the sidewalk or the garage floor. Uh, the garage floor has an epoxy coating and that may have gotten chipped off if I didn't do the breaking initially around the perimeter right now I've got my 42 inch wide bucket on there with the teeth I use that the teeth bucket uh, for the demo and then when I want to do my fine grading I switch out to the smooth bucket So we basically took two of these trailer loads of concrete out of here. All the concrete ends up uh, being recycled and crushed into uh, what they use for road base. It goes under artificial turf. It goes under pavers. You can put it under your concrete. Um, just depends on your soil conditions. Well, we ran into a water line here, and I did. I broke it all. Got everything broken out, and uh, this line was still intact. Initially, I was thinking that line went across, um, went into this little planter bed, and it came out from underneath the brick, because the valves are on the other side of all that brickwork. It turned out that a uh, pipe that I was very careful breaking around was just. A pipe that had been thrown away and for some reason it was right in the middle of the concrete 
So it was a dead end. It was only about a four foot length and it was just uh, some scrap pipe that somehow ended up in the concrete pour on the initial driveway. So all the brick, um, that's going to end up going to a landfill because they don't use that for a road base. It's a soft material so that gets tossed. Now the nice thing about this driveway after I removed it, it had about a good six inches of uh, base underneath it because initially these houses were all asphalt driveways and you know asphalt needs base under because it really doesn't have a structural value to it so it has to have something to support asphalt which is the base. Now the nice thing about that base being there, I was able to drag some of that over to the other area where it used to be planter, and so we've got a nice uh, base underneath this entire pour. Plus we're going to put some number three rebar, we're going to put that at two foot centers. I'm going to throw in some of the fiber that I happen to have in stock, and I also sell it through my storefront, uh, through my website. And I sell for about 350 a pound. And if you get it from the concrete plant mixed into the load, you're going to pay about, well, in this area, my area, we're paying about 850 a pound. I'm selling it for 350. So it's a nice little savings if you're planning on pouring some concrete. I have a right angle grinder there with a carborandum cutoff blade, metal cutoff blade, and uh, it cuts it really quickly. You can use bolt cutters on this number three, it's just a little more work. Or you can get yourself on a hydraulic uh, rebar cutter. The way I tie the rebar is I tie the entire perimeter 100% and then what I do after I get the perimeter is I tie every other one. So what I do um, to do that is I go on a 45 degree angle and that assures that I'm tying every other bar. All the dobies, I use uh, the dobies with tie wire in them, so that actually ties some of the um, cross sections with adobe. Now we have some expansion foam down there at the bottom of the city sidewalk because you know when you got trees in a small parkway, you're going to be removing the city sidewalk a lot more often than a, a driveway that doesn't have any trees around it. Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. Early in the morning, 7 a.m., pumper's just arriving, waiting on the concrete truck. We're gonna pour this driveway out. Uh, we're gonna be using this M18 switch tank concrete sprayer. And that, by the way, is, is going to be uh, something that we'll be giving away later in this video. And uh, within the video, if you stay tuned, You'll catch my key phrase that you're going to have to uh, comment on and then whoever comments on that phrase that I'm going to say in, within this video will be in, entered into the drawing, random drawing. And we're going to be sending two of these out. I got a couple extra ones from Milwaukee. And uh, anyway, stay tuned. I'm going to film this whole process. Have a good one. Hi, I'm back. What we have here is the hand autograph from the student body of Hope Builders. They autographed, autographed this and gave me this trowel, so I'm going to be using it today. This is the first job. I put a clear sealer on, on this to preserve the autographs, but uh, we'll see how it holds up and how well this trowel really works today. Well, anyway, uh, that trowel I happened to get from Hope Builders in Santa Ana, California. They um, signed it. 
all the student body and uh, I broke it in on this job and it worked really nice and that clear lacquer I put on there preserved the autographs on there here we are rotting the concrete and this is a 3000 PSI we've got fiber mesh in there it's a pea gravel mix so it's probably like a half inch minus aggregate in it and uh, we're pumping it out you could potentially tailgate a job this size but uh, I was a little skeptical putting the rear tires up on this apron approach or sidewalk because of the palm tree raising everything um, it may have cracked the concrete with a load on there so we're pumping it or you could wheelbarrow it also but you're going to need a couple more labors uh, to do that for you we'll be wet joining all this concrete we're going to put uh, two coming down and one across and then another off the corner of the house by the gate brand new concrete truck here it's uh, run by natural gas nice looking rig I noticed they put the veteran in this um, rig Right now we're using the uh, four foot magnesium bull float and it has a rocker arm on it. That way we can shoot it as far as we want to go and we can get it back every time without getting buried. I believe we did uh, eight and a half yards here. Now we're taking a measuring tape and we're going to lay out the joint pattern here. So we're going to end up with three sections um, going that direction and three the other way. So you'll have a total of seven, seven sections, including that side yard area. The first tool that we're going to cut this joint with is a two and a half inch deep um, cutter, and it's about three feet long. So it, it, it runs really straight once you get it in the concrete. It runs a lot straighter than just a joiner by itself. The so joiner by itself is 10 inches long max. And the um, cutter tool that I use is 3 feet. So it stays on a, a straight line a lot better. And, and you're cutting um, 3 times deeper with that tool. Versus a joiner that runs about three, quarter of, 3 quarters of an inch deep. What that does is it breaks the aggregate that depth even though you cream it back in with the three-quarter deep you still have the aggregate separated so it assures of a really good crack crack control you could potentially cream that crack all the way in and it's still going to crack there because you've separated the aggregate So we did pretty good on this. Um, no plastic um, anywhere to contain the concrete from splattering or um, uh, during the laydown process. And that's just something that comes with practice. A lot of times uh, you're going to get a lot of concrete splattering if you don't know what you're doing. So if you get some practice in and you work concrete, you won't get the splattering. So we've got our joints in. Now we're just going over it with a funny trowel. Once that's complete, and it was a little, it was too hard for the funny trowel, so we had to get out there on boards to get put more pressure on the trowels.
now we have the horsehair broom 50% nylon 50% horsehair really nice combination anyway the key word to get that concrete sprayer um, the key word I want everyone to say within the video is Milwaukee M18 switch tank concrete sprayer I want one that's the whole phrase everyone that comments that phrase will be entered into a drawing and I'm giving two away Milwaukee will send them out directly that way it saves me shipping fees anyway uh, remember that phrase don't say it ten times fast because it's a real tongue twister the nice thing about that sprayer it has a built-in strainer in it and right now we're spraying some curing compound on here and this particular curing compound stays white and it takes about takes quite some time before it dissipates it probably takes a good month so 28 days is your typical cure time for concrete to reach that specific PSI that you put down. So, you know, you're looking at a white driveway for about a month. Which went really nicely with the brick because it has some white in that too. Anyway, we used the um, cone spray. And I switched her out to the uh, fan spray which seemed to be a little bit better now the cleanup for this particular type sprayer is mineral spirits um, breaks it down really quickly if you want to get rid of it and you don't want to wait that 28 days there are some clear carrying compounds as well but this one is um, probably a better one than the ones that dry clear this is actually going to work better for the concrete. And what that does is it prevents it from shrinkage cracks. And right now we're running hot down here, about 90 degrees. And uh, you need carrying compound this time of year. Anyway, oh, it does work in cold weather as well because it may, holds retains some of the heat. So you won't get a freeze on your concrete as well. But, you know, that's when the burlap bags and stuff come in, you know, salamander heaters and stuff like that. Anyway, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.